In one of my classes the other day, we were working a longer problem, but the problem landed here. And what happened in one of my classes was we actually had a lot of students who had different ways of reasoning through this. And I thought it might make for an interesting video to look at the different ways that you could tackle this problem. Well, one of the ways you could try to do this is by clearing the fractions out. And you could do that by multiplying both sides by the number 10. If you multiply the left side by 10, you would get 30 over 5. On the right side, the 10s cancel out. 30 divided by 5 is 6. And now you've landed at a one-step equation. So that's one way you could do it. I had a student multiply the left side by 2 over 2. I thought this was kind of a slick thing to do. Uh, what he did was he took this side over here, multiplied it by 2 over 2, which of course is 1. That gave him 6 over 10 equals 18 over 10. And he recognized that 6 times 3 would give him the 18. Therefore, x had to be equal to 3. Thought that was a slick way of doing it. Another way you could do it is a way that is often taught in like elementary school, middle school. And that would be, you might want to first reduce this fraction on the right to 9 fifths. You can get there by dividing by 2 and then multiplying by the reciprocal. So multiply by 5 thirds. The reason that works is because this would give you 15 over 15 X. Over here, those would cancel out, leaving you with 9 over 3. And of course, 15 over 15 is equal to 1. So you can get the 3 that way. Another way that you could do it is you could opt to convert them to decimals. Now, this doesn't always work, but if it does work with nice decimals, it's certainly a valid way of doing it. So 3 fifths converts to 0 0.6, 18 over 10 is 1.8, and then you could bust out your calculator and figure it out that way. All of these ways should land you at x equals 3, and I think it's a neat way of looking at a variety of ways to handle problems that sometimes can get uncomfortable because of the presence of fractions. So stay creative and figure out your own way to reason through the problems.